What is the Internet? It is a network of computers connecting thousands and millions of computers networks all over the world. And none can determine the number of connected computers which increase continuously. Or shortly we can say it's a distributed bucket switched network. What, uh, what is the meaning of a packet? A packet is a small amount of data sent over a network, similar to a real-life package. Each packet includes a source and destination, as well as the content or data being transferred. Actually, when you need to send anything over the internet, such as an email, an image, the internet will divide your email into small pieces that will be transferred to the destination using a packet. So the packet will work as a driver that will hold the source information, the sender information, and the destination or the receiver information and the content of the mail. As anybody in charge of the internet, there is no particular government or agency responsible for the internet. But we're having some non-governmental agencies that provide the needed applications software to control the internet, such as software engineers, um, programming companies who are working on creating new softwares, new games, new applications. So, how does the internet work? Most of us know how to use the internet without actually understanding how it works, sort of like electricity in your home. You use it every day, but may not understand the mechanics behind it. And if the electric grid is difficult to understand, then the internet must be impossible, right? Wrong. In the next few minutes, I'll put you in the top 10% of people who understand how the internet actually works. For SecurityCatalyst.com, I'm Aaron Titus. Whenever most people think of the Internet, this is what comes to mind. The Internet is not a bubble cloud, even in the new age of cloud computing. The whole fuzzy cloud picture was created by people more concerned about job security than education. This is the Internet. The Internet is a wire, actually buried in the ground. It might be fiber optics, copper, or occasionally beamed to satellites or through cell phone networks, but the Internet is simply a wire. The Internet is useful because two computers connected directly to this wire can communicate. A server is a special computer connected directly to the Internet, and web pages are files on that server's hard drive. Every server has a unique Internet protocol address, or IP address. Just like a postal address, IP addresses help computers find each other. But since 72.14.205.100 doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, we also give them names like Google.com, Facebook.com, or SecurityCatalyst.com. So this is how it works. Your computer at home is not a server, because it's not connected directly to the Internet. Computers you and I use every day are called clients, because they're connected indirectly to the Internet through an Internet service provider. Here we'll pretend that this is my home laptop, and I'm using DSL. Now let's pretend that I want to visit AOL.com, which is coincidentally both a server and an ISP. I hop onto my laptop with DSL, go through my ISP, onto the internet, and look at AOL.com. My computer connects with AOL.com, and I can look at its web pages. Now let's say that I want to send an email to Aunt Ruth. Aunt Ruth has AOL dial-up from home, and I've got a Gmail account. I log on to gmail.com and compose a message to Aunt Ruth's email address, AuntRuth at AOL.com. Once I click send, gmail.com sends the email to AOL.com. The next day, Aunt Ruth dials into AOL servers and retrieves the email. Whenever an email, picture, or web page travels across the Internet, computers break the information into smaller pieces called packets. 
When information reaches its destination, the packets are reassembled in their original order to make a picture, email, web page, or tweet. Okay, so imagine you're at work sitting next to your boss, and you're both surfing online. Your boss is doing market research, and you're updating your Facebook profile. You're both sending packets back and forth over the internet. But what's to keep your packets from accidentally ending up on your boss's screen? <laughs> that could be embarrassing. The solution to that problem is IP addresses and routers. Everything connected directly or indirectly to the internet has an IP address. Everything. That includes your computer, servers, cell phones, and all of the equipment in between. Anywhere two or more parts of the internet intersect, there's a piece of equipment called a router. Routers direct your packets around the internet, helping each packet get one step closer to its destination. Every time you visit a website, upwards of 10 to 15 routers may help your packets find their way to and from your computer. Imagine each packet as a piece of candy wrapped in several layers. The first layer is your computer's IP address. Your computer sends the packet to the first router, which adds its own IP address. Each time the packet reaches a new router, another layer is added until it reaches the server. Then, when the server sends back information, it creates packets with an identical wrapping. As the packet makes its way over the internet back to your computer, each router unwraps a layer to discover where to send the packet next until it reaches your computer and not your boss's. And that's how the internet works, in five minutes or less. And you're now easily in the top 10% of people who understand the basics of the internet. If you found this video helpful, check out securitycatalyst.com for all kinds of ideas on how to protect your information. I'm Aaron Titus. Here we have some internet concepts that you need to know. One, ISP is an abbreviation for Internet Service Provider. It is the company that provides the internet services such as Vodafone and Salat here in Egypt. Protocol is a well-known set of rules and standards used to communicate between computers connected to the internet. All the different devices on the internet have unique addresses. An address on the internet is just a number that's unique to each device on the internet. This is similar to the emailing system. Each one has a unique mail address. So if you need to contact anyone using the email, you need to know his email address. Having a unique email address for each person helping the emailing system to send the correct message to the correct person. Having a unique email, sorry, having a unique address for each device connected to the internet, helping the internet to delivering the correct data to the correct device. The internet protocol or the IP address. The IP address is the internet protocol responsible for transferring data through the internet. That's why each device connected to the internet should have its unique IP address. Internet Browser It is a program used to display the different types of available information on the internet websites. For example, Google Chrome. Website It is the visited location for more information about the site owner. It includes two or more web pages connected together. Home page of a website, it is the first page which appears when loading the website and helps in moving to the other web pages easily. Hyperlink, it is an image or text in the web page that when pointing to it, it pointing the pointer becomes as a hand and when clicking it move to another web page do you remember we took hyperlink last term or in trimester one uh, and uh, in web expression address or url it indicates to 
the address or the URL of needed website so the address of the website is called the URL it indicates to the address or the URL of the needed website for example www.youtube.com upload and download upload mean to transfer the information from your computer to the center computer on the internet or to the server of the internet to download it means to transfer or copy files from the internet to your computer Hi, my name is John. I lead the search and machine learning teams at Google. Well, I think it's uh, amazingly inspiring that people all over the world uh, turn to search engines to ask trivial questions and incredibly important questions. So it's a huge responsibility to give them the best answers that we can. Hi, uh, my name is Akshaya and I work on the Bing search team. There are many times where we'll start looking into artificial intelligence and machine learning, but we have to address how are the users going to use this? Because end of the day, we want to make an impact to society. Let's ask a simple question. How long does it take to travel to Mars? Where did these results come from? And why was this listed before the other one? Okay, let's dive in and see how the search engine turned your request into a result. The first thing you need to know is that when you do a search, the search engine isn't actually going out to the World Wide Web to run your search in real time. And that's because there's over a billion websites on the internet and hundreds more are being created every single minute. So if the search engine had to look through every single site to find the one you wanted, it would just take forever. So to make your search faster, search engines are constantly scanning the web in advance to record the information that might help with your search later. That way, when you search about travel to Mars, the search engine already has what it needs to give you an answer in real time. Here's how it works. The internet is a web of pages connected to each other by hyperlinks. Search engines are constantly running a program called a spider that crawls through these web pages to collect information about them. Each time it finds a hyperlink, it follows it until it has visited every page it can find on the entire internet. For each page the spider visits, it records any information it might need for a search by adding it to a special database called a search index. Now, let's go back to that search from earlier and see if we can figure out how the search engine came up with the results. When you ask, how long does it take to travel to Mars, the search engine looks at each of those words in the search index to immediately get a list of all the pages on the internet containing those words. But just looking for these search terms could return millions of pages. So the search engine needs to be able to determine the best matches to show you first. This is where it gets tricky because the search engine may need to guess what you're looking for. Each search engine uses its own algorithm to rank the pages based on what it thinks you want. The search engine's ranking algorithm might check if your search term shows up in the page title. It might check if all of the words show up next to each other or any number of other calculations that help it better determine which pages you'll want to see and which you won't. Google invented the most famous algorithm for choosing the most relevant results for a search by taking into account how many other web pages link to a given page. The idea is that if lots of websites think that a web page is interesting, then it's probably the one you're looking for. This algorithm is called PageRank, not because it ranks web pages, but because it was named after its inventor, Larry Page, who's one of the founders of Google. Because a website often makes money when you visit it, spammers are constantly trying to find ways to game the search algorithm so that their pages are listed higher in the results. Search engines regularly update their algorithms to prevent fake or untrustworthy sites from reaching the top. Ultimately, it's up to you to keep an eye out for these pages that are untrustworthy by looking at the web address and making sure it's a reliable source. Search programs are always evolving to improve the algorithms so that they return better results, faster results than their competitors. Today's search engines even use information that you haven't explicitly provided to help you narrow down your search. So for example, if you did a search for dog parks, 
Many search engines would give you results for all the dog parks nearby, even though you didn't type in your location. Modern search engines also understand more than just the words on a page, but what they actually mean in order to find the best one that matches what you're looking for. For example, if you search for fast picture, it will know you're looking for an athlete. But if you search for large picture, it will find you options for your kitchen. To understand the words better, we use something called machine learning, a type of artificial intelligence. It enables search algorithms to search out not just individual letters or words in the page, but understand the underlying meaning of the words. The internet is growing exponentially. But if the teams that design search engines do our jobs right, the information you want should always be just a few keystrokes away. As announced on Moodle, starting this week, you're going to submit your assignment on Google Classroom. So make sure to copy your class code, sign in to your Gmail account from Google Apps, scroll down to Classroom, click here. You're having two options, join or create. Select join, paste or type the class code, click join. Now we are inside the course from classwork. You're having your assignment. This week assignment is assign four. Click here. For this week assignment, you're having an online assignment, MCQ questions. If you were asked to back to classwork, if you were asked to upload a file or send a file, click on the assignment here. Add or create file attach the file from your PC to the assignment on Google Classroom in case you were asked to upload a file in case you were asked to finish anything on code.org or to submit anything online after you're done on doing your task on code.org for example make sure to click mark as done and mark as done Thanks for watching.